Hi friends, welcome to the Chic Soul YouTube channel. My name is Hannah and I am a model with Chic Soul and today I'll be answering your questions that you sent in through Facebook and Instagram polls. I have always wanted to do something like this so I am really excited to jump right in. We'll start with question number one. Can you talk about your experience in the plus size modeling industry? I absolutely can. I think there's a question later about like how I got into plus size modeling. So this is kind of gonna answer that as well. But I started when I was 15. It's kind of funny actually, I tell the story a lot, but I never really get it down to tell it the right way or like, I don't know, really fluently. So basically when I was 14, I get this DM from this like lady named Ursula. And she says, when you're 15, if you're interested in modeling, like, call me, have your mom call me. So I knew who she was because her daughter went to school with me. I was like, oh, that sounds really cool. But my mom was definitely hesitant about it because, you know, some strange woman like DMing me on Instagram about being a model. She was also just hesitant about the modeling industry in general because, you know, there's a lot of questionable things about the environment. We eventually got to a point where my mom was like, okay, we can give her a call, we can have a meeting and see what happens from there. So we did that. We had a meeting with Ursula and she told me, you know, like all about the modeling industry, what it would be like as a plus size model. And mind you, I had never like really heard about plus size modeling. I had always thought growing up, like I'm too big to be a model. I'm not this size zero little skinny girl. Cause I've always been tall and I guess generally conventionally attractive. So people were like, you should be a model someday. And I was like, honey, do you see what this body looks like? So I was never really under the impression that that would be a career path for me. But we talked to Ursula and she told us all about how it would work. I needed to get some pictures for my book, all sorts of things, like everything about how it worked. Um, so I started working pretty quickly, actually. My first client ever was Belk. I worked for them pretty frequently, um, but they shoot in North Carolina. So I live in Atlanta, I'm based in Atlanta. I would drive with my mom when I was 15 to North Carolina, just about a four hour drive. So it's not like too, too bad, but not super easy. So that's how I started. And then I was in high school at that time. I was a freshman in high school and I kept doing that kind of thing. Just driving with my mom everywhere. When you're under the age of 18, you have to have like a parent or guardian with you when you're modeling just for like liability reasons and cause you're not an adult. My mom didn't have to be on set with me. Thank goodness. I do not think I could model in front of my mother. It's kind of weird. And she was never like a helicopter mom. There are definitely moms in the modeling industry who like have to be there all the time and are super conscious of what their child is doing, which is totally fine. But my mom was not like that and I really appreciated it. So I did that for years and years and years and then turned 18, started going by myself. I've just always like balanced modeling with school because I'm in college now. I go to Georgia Tech. So I'm here on a holiday. <laughs> I, you know, just kind of integrated it into my life. It's a heck of a part-time job. It's really like shaped me and my experience and a lot of things about me. So I guess that's my experience in the plus size modeling industry. There's a lot more to that, but I'm sure I'll answer that later. Okay, question number two. How can I become a plus size model? I've always wanted to get into it. So I get this question a lot. A lot of people who follow me on Instagram like know that I'm a model and ask whenever I like do a kind of Q&A thing on my Instagram, like how do you get into modeling? There's definitely a lot that goes into it, but it is also very possible. I had kind of a non-traditional route of it, I guess, because I wasn't looking to model. I wasn't, I never thought that I would be a model. If you want that, if you think that it's something that you wanna do, you can definitely do that. And you can go one of two routes, which is being represented by an agent or doing freelance modeling. 
I'm represented by an agent, so I recommend that just because there's a lot to know about the modeling industry that like you wouldn't necessarily know just as a normal person. Like I had no idea what I was doing and still wouldn't have any idea what I'm doing by myself after six years of modeling. So what you do is you need to build a book, a portfolio. So your portfolio is the collection of all the professional images that you have of yourself. So you can do that before or after you get signed with an agent. It helps a little if you're already signed because your agent will be able to connect you with reputable photographers, um, but you can still do it by yourself before to help you get signed. A lot of agencies, like to get signed with them, a lot of them just have a tab on their website or a form or whatever that's like for you to apply. They want you to, they typically want you to submit some pictures of yourself, obviously, so they know what you look like, which are called digitals. And digitals are something that you will continue to keep up with during your time as a model. So digitals are not professional pictures. They are like literally iPhone pictures of what you look like on a day-to-day -day basis, except a little more made up. Cause you know, you wanna put your best foot forward if you're trying to like get signed with an agency. So they typically want to see you pretty naturally though. You would, you would not be doing a full face of makeup like this. You would not. You would put maybe a little bit of concealer on, mascara, just make yourself look fresh. Um, and then you would wear uh, something that shows your figure, that shows what your body looks like. Specifically in the plus size industry because, you know, we want to see those curves. We love the curves. So I typically wear like jeans, some skinny jeans, a tank top or a fitted long sleeve shirt or something of that nature. You'll get all that on, do all that jazz. And then you'll have somebody somebody else or maybe you own a tripod. I invested in a tripod recently so that I can be my own Instagram boyfriend is the whole trend going around right now. But you'll have somebody or yourself take pictures on a pretty like neutral background and really show what you look like. So you'll do a few close-ups of like waist up, a few full body pictures that you can submit online. There may be guidelines depending on what agency you're submitting to. They may have some guidelines on the website that you should follow, but a general rule of thumb is just like, get some pictures from several angles, like make sure that they know what you look like. Sometimes they'll request swim or like lingerie digitals if you're comfortable with that. So you would just get like a matching set and take the same kind of pictures. And yeah, so that's the first step is digitals really. If you're submitting to an agency, you'll need those. And those are something that you keep up with all the time. Like I go in to my agency every few months and take digitals. I actually took some like last week. But that's something that's kind of the clients use them to know what you look like day of as opposed to what you look like in all of your superposed, like high makeup pictures. So once you submit, then you'll wait to see if you hear back from the agency and then jumping forward, assuming you get signed, or even if you're just doing this by yourself, you need to build your book. So you will look for some professional photographers, like professional, something that you'll probably have to invest in because you're paying for a photographer's work, their art. You'll find some professional photographers and do some shoots and get those pictures for your book. So you'll need to build a book with professional photographers and then that's what your agent uses to like cater you to clients or what you would use if you're doing freelance. I'm really not gonna speak a lot about freelance cause I have no idea how that works, honestly. But anyway, build your book, market to clients and then clients will hire you based on that. And your book goes on like the agency's website. So you could look me up if you wanted to, you could look me up on UrsulaWeedmanModels.com. Um, you can see my whole portfolio. 
You can also see a lot of it on my Instagram, but that's how agents get clients for their models. How did you become a chic soul model? So like I was saying, your agent has your portfolio up on their website. Um, I got booked with Chic Soul through my agency, my mother agent, and then I started coming here and they liked me. So they kept hiring me and here I am. Like, I don't think it's been two, three years. I think the first time I came here was like my freshman year of college, which I'm a junior now. The rest was history with Chic Soul. And here I am. How old were you when you started modeling? So I mentioned this earlier. So I was 15 when I started modeling and I'm 21 now, so it's been about six years. What is your advice for being represented by an agency versus being an influencer? So I can talk on the point of being represented by an agency, but I wouldn't necessarily consider myself an influencer. I mean, I'm just a college student. <laughs> I'm definitely like getting more towards that side because I have a lot of followers. Basically, the difference between kind of being represented by an agent versus doing it yourself is an agency will have a lot of established clientele and it will really, really help you to move forward with your career. If you're kind of going the influencer route on Instagram, it has totally blown up and Instagram has become a really great tool for it and for the modeling industry, but it will definitely be a lot of work to do that yourself. I personally recommend being signed with an agent because it's been a great, great experience for me. But if you wanna get on that hustle, you go girl. I am happy for you. <laughs> Next question. Can I be as pretty as you? I'm sure you are, queen. Everybody is beautiful in their own way. There are, <laughs> I think about this a lot and being a model, there are a lot of outtakes when you're doing photo shoot. So let me just tell you, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of terrible pictures of me out there in the universe that people have on their cameras. You just don't see them because those aren't the ones that get posted. So I promise you there are a lot of awful ones of me on the internet and other places. You are such a talented model. <laughs> Thank you. Have you always been so confident? Absolutely not. No, 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 no. And let me just tell you, confidence is a journey for everybody and it's different for everybody and it is not a linear path at all. Like even the most confident people that you know right now, they have their bad days. Everybody does. I, like I said, I was 15 and when you're 15, you're like, you've gone through puberty, but you're still really awkward and like in an awkward stage where you're kind of accepting yourself. So in a way that helped me that I started modeling at that age because I really learned how to accept myself and my body on camera like while I was going through that. Like I said, it was a journey. It's still a journey. There's still days that I see pictures of myself and I'm like, oh gosh, I look awful. Or I really don't like the way that my body looks in that picture. But that happens to everybody, literally everybody, because you also like learn what looks good for you and what looks good for your body. And what really helps as a model is that a lot of times um, people will have, or like clients will have screens that you can see the pictures that you're taking. So you can see, oh, that pose did not work for me. That was pretty unflattering. So then you can alter that and you can make sure that the next one looks a little better. No, I have not always been confident. I'm still on my journey for that. I have gotten to a good place where, you know, I feel good about myself and I hope that everybody gets to that place as well. What were you like growing up? Sports, artsy kid, book nerd. Boy, was I all of them. So I was told when I was younger that I was the jack of all trades and the master of none. But let me tell you, that recently I have heard the full saying. So it's jack of all trades, master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. So I was always made to feel bad that I did kind of everything and I didn't focus myself on one thing. But then I heard that and I was like, yeah, you know what? 
I do a lot of stuff and that's pretty cool. So anyway, I played sports. I played basketball and softball for a lot of my life, probably from when I was, I don't, what am I even doing? I'm doing my eyebrows next. I played basketball and softball from when I was like five or six to, I mean, I started in t-ball. <laughs> I played t-ball baseball because we didn't have like a t-ball softball league. So I played t-ball baseball with my brother. My dad was our coach. So I did basketball and softball for like most of my life. And then in high school, I also started doing track and field. I did discus and shot put because I am not a runner. That is not me. So I did the and field part of track and field, but I really, really enjoyed it. So I did track and field for my, like all four years of high school. I eventually quit softball and basketball because I also did theater. I'm a big old, big old theater nerd. I had a lot of time commitment for that, that I had to, you know, like modify. And I eventually chose theater over sports. My favorite musical that I ever did in high school was the Addams Family musical. So I played Morticia, who's the mom, and she is just this like boss half vampire, basically. She was one of my most fun and favorite roles. I had a lot of fun as a kid. And I was also pretty smart. I mean, I go to Georgia Tech, so I guess I'm kind of a smart person. I'm still a theater nerd, but I go to an engineering school. What's been your favorite memory from working with Chic Soul? So I actually I had a really fun time on our Valentine's Day shoot that was recently, and I ate so much candy that we were shooting with that I was probably on a sugar high the entire time. But we were just laughing, like having fun. It was really great. Other than that, my favorite part aspect about working with Chic Soul is really like the people. I've specifically gotten pretty close to Kim over the past few years, and you all know Kim because we've you know, work together a lot. We have to pretend like we're best friends on camera, but then we actually like turn into best friends. <laughs> you know, just all of the people that I've gotten to work with here because they're great and they're wonderful and they make it a fun time for me. Where do you see yourself in five years? Let me tell you, that's a very, very good question. Like I said, I'm in college, I'm studying industrial engineering, which sounds really fancy, but it's not that fancy. It's like systems engineering. We work with optimization, supply chain, things of that nature. So in five years, I could have several different life paths of which I can use my degree and be working somewhere. I'd really love to work in the airline industry if I'm gonna use my degree. I definitely think, I'll graduate in about two years, but I definitely think once I graduate, I wanna take some time to model full time. So that's something that will probably happen in my future. I don't know if it'll be five years in the future that I'll still be doing that. My entire life goal really is to be an actress. It'd be super cool if in five years you see me on a screen somewhere, but we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. Ask me in five years where I see myself, because I have no idea. How has the modeling industry changed since you've started? Do you think there is more representation of all body types? Where do you see it going? Very good question. So it's been six years, it's been a long time. I mentioned that I was a lot smaller when I started, but I was still considered a plus size model. So in that way, it has definitely, definitely gotten better. Um, I think there's a lot more representation now than there has been in the past, which is amazing. I see the modeling industry going even further with representation. I think Chic Soul does a really great job of representing a lot of body types. Like you see me and you see Kim and you see like both of the Alexis's that have, we all have very different body types. It's representative of people because nobody looks the same. I think more brands are gonna start doing that and start really showing what everyday people look like because that's who the clientele are. Like you wanna be able to see somebody who looks like you in the ads and in what you're buying. And you wanna know what your body type would look like in all of these clothes or whatever. And I think it's gotten better, but it still has a long way to go. I think it'll get there. There's just always the stereotype that you have to be like super tall to be a model. It's not really true because not everybody's tall. So you also wanna see what clothes look like on shorter bodies. What's your best advice for looking and feeling amazing as a plus size woman? <sighs> My best advice is that you only get one life and one body. 
So why spend your time hating it? It's just a waste of your time. If you're unhappy with the way that you look, there are definitely things that you can do to change that, but I think they need to come from a healthy place of making you feel better, not making you try to look better, if that makes sense. I get questions about what do you eat on the day of a shoot? I say, I get Chick-fil-A for breakfast, probably Chick-fil-A again for lunch, something of that nature, because I am a big proponent of eat what you want, eat what makes you feel good. I'm not gonna say I've never bought into the diet culture because I did when I was younger and I thought that I needed to be on a diet. I don't anymore because why waste your life not eating good food, in my opinion? It just comes with other things to make you feel good. Like, I don't know, if you're into working out and you wanna work out to make your body feel good, then great. I do that because I want to eat what I want and what makes me feel good, what tastes good. I probably eat Chick-fil-A breakfast every time I have a shoot that starts in the morning. Cause I would say that I am definitely a Chick-fil-A breakfast connoisseur and I will be there before 10.30. I will. I will make it, even if I leave my house at 10.20. I will do it because I need it. It's my fuel for the day. So all of that to say, do what makes you feel good, love yourself, and be yourself as authentically as you can because you only get this one life in this one body, so you should enjoy it. What kind of music do you listen to? I listen to a lot of different music. I kind of, in high school, I got into this, I guess I would call it a rut of listening to only like show tunes. <laughs> so then when I got to college, I went to Music Midtown my freshman year, which is like a music festival that happens in Atlanta. And I was like on this musical awakening. It's like, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff out there to listen to. I listened to pop, some alt rock, some of my, favorite bands and artists are. I love Casey Musgraves, Maggie Rogers, that kind of vibe. I also love and will always have undying love for Pentatonix because acapella is just so freaking cool. Really like AJR. I still do listen to show tunes, just not with as much frequency. I also know a lot of classic rock because I have a father who was born in the 1960s. I tend to impress older people when I'm on set and they have like Van Halen playing and I know all of the words. Because that's another thing about me is for some reason, I'm really, really good at remembering lyrics to songs. Don't ask me why. I can listen to a song like three times probably and know the lyrics. That's a little like fun party trick of mine. I also listen to reggaeton now, like Spanish music. So listen to some Bad Bunny, J Balvin, good party music. What's your favorite movie of all time? You know, I honestly always dread this question because picking one movie is so difficult. I'm sorry, I don't think I'm gonna be able to. I love the Avengers universe, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Love, 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 love those movies. My favorite one out of all of those, probably Black Panther. Classic, amazing. Rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman. Amazing, amazing actor and man. I also am a big old Star Wars nerd. I have a bunch of posters in my room. We're actually, my roommates and I are actually hanging like three Star Wars posters in our living room. Gonna be a Star Wars themed apartment. I wouldn't really consider myself a movie buff. I'm the kind of person who I'll probably love any movie that I watch, unless it's just really like awful. I can appreciate something in every movie. And I love Harry Potter too. Just like all of those universes are amazing. Um, my Starbucks order, in case you're curious, is a venti iced vanilla latte with almond milk. So it's very yummy. Who is your celebrity crush? You mean I have to pick one? Well, we know I love the Marvel Universe. So I love those Marvel boys. Like, oh my gosh, Tom Holland, he's such a cutie. He's probably not my crush. I just think he's the cutest thing ever. I love Chris Pratt. He's a cutie. Oh, Ryan Reynolds. That's the one. If I had to pick one, Ryan Reynolds. Cause first of all, he's hilarious. Second of all, he is such a cutie. Third of all, he has the most amazing, beautiful wife, Blake Lively, who is also one of my celebrity crushes. So. Like, talk about a power couple. Gosh, love them. How do you feel about wearing bright colors as a plus-size woman? 
I've always heard only wear black. I think you should always wear what you want to wear. I know that people say like black is slimming, makes you look slimmer, but like who cares? Honestly, if you want to wear bright colors that show off your personality, like do that because what matters more is you reflecting your personality than trying to please anybody else with what you're wearing. It takes a while to kind of feel comfortable with that and get into it of wearing what you want for you, but that should definitely be the ultimate goal. And I've definitely kind of come into that more recently of like, I'm not trying to please anybody else with what I'm wearing. And you know, when I do my makeup, I'm not doing it for anybody else. I'm doing it because I love doing it and because it makes me feel good. I definitely think that mindset is something that can help you a lot with being more confident in wearing brighter colors or wearing, you know, fun patterns or things like that. You can find ways to do it that are more flattering than others, but ultimately it's just about you feeling good. And when you feel good, you really like look good to other people. When you're confident in the way that you look, people are like, wow, she looks so good because she is just owning that. So that's, that's my advice for that is really do it for yourself and you will feel good and you will radiate that energy. I'm self-conscious of my arms. How can I have confidence in the summer? This is also a journey. Everything with confidence is a journey. I really have embraced and live by the motto of like, everybody is a bikini body. Everybody is a tank top body if you're wearing like something sleeveless or whatever because you don't have to fit some standard you don't have to wear sleeves because somebody else thinks your arms look big if you feel confident in the clothes that you're wearing then that is all you need like who cares about the opinions of others which is something that i definitely struggle with a lot i'm like oh how does this look what are people gonna think when they see me in this but the reality is that they're not worried about that. Nobody else is worried about what you're wearing, except you. And if you feel good about it, then other people will see that. And I know it's hard to get there, but sometimes you just have to take that leap of faith and to feel more comfortable wearing things that are more revealing of your arms or other parts of your body, you kind of just have to do it. I mean, that's, that's my personal advice. Obviously do whatever, you feel comfortable with, but taking that leap of faith is a big step in doing that and feeling more confident about it. So when it comes to the summertime or the warmer months, if you want to wear that tank top, wear it. If you want to wear that bikini, do it. Because if you think it's cute and you want to, then you should. You shouldn't have to worry about what other people will think about that. It'll take some time. Like maybe you need to wear it around your house first and just Feel confident in that. And then you can kind of move on from there. Take some baby steps. It's all a journey and it's not gonna be linear, but you can get there. Any tips for tucking a shirt without looking unflattering? So I'm a big proponent of the French tuck. And I learned this from Mr. Tan France himself, who is one of the hosts of Queer Eye, which is an amazing show if you haven't watched it already, will bring you to tears. The French tuck is like a half tuck. I mean, you can't really see it right now, but you can just tuck a little part of your shirt in the front of your jeans. Also do like a little, you know that trick that we all used to do when we were younger, where you tie up your t-shirt with a hair tie and then you can kind of like flip it under to just make some dimension. If you all want to see like a styling video or how I tuck my shirts or whatever for a lot of different types of clothing pieces, then comment that down below and we can make that happen if you wanna see that. How do you feel about layering? I feel like it adds extra bulk to my body, but there has to be a way to make it work. Very good question. That's something that I've also kind of come to terms with recently is that you, there's definitely a strategic way to layering to make it look flattering for your body type. One piece of advice is to have different, like to have your layers hit different parts of your body. So I like to wear 
like a long shirt or a sweatshirt that has a longer hem and then maybe put a denim jacket over that comes halfway down like a crop. If you add dimension to your body, then it gives you, it can help you get a nice shape instead of just making you look bulky. But something that I've come to terms with recently is that it's okay if it looks bulky. It's like, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, I don't wanna diminish anybody's feelings about that, but it's okay to feel bulky as long as you're feeling good about it. I keep coming back to that. Like, you should feel good. You should feel good in what you're wearing because that's ultimately what it, what it should be. Layering is also very important for these winter months because, you know, you go inside and everywhere you go is blasting the heat because it's cold outside. So, you know, they need the heat on, but then you get in there and you're like sweating so much. Um, so layering is definitely a plus, um, but there's ways to do that well. And again, if you all wanna see a styling video from me, you can comment that down below. We can do that. I can show you ways to style layers because I love layers. I really do. I think they make an outfit a lot more interesting. There's ways to do it to flatter your body and your body type. Where are those layers, girl? <laughs> How can I become a chic soul model? If you just think I'm feeling called to be a model and I love chic soul's clothes and I would love to model all of those, their chic soul frequently has model calls and always looking for new models to represent new body types. So you can go to the chic soul website and you can fill out the model call information and then you could potentially become a chic soul model. You can meet me. Yeah, cause you know, you wanna be friends with me. Me and Kim and Alexis and just, we'll all have a party together with chic soul. How did you learn how to do makeup? <laughs> Good question. Just like this, actually, watching a lot of YouTube. <laughs> In high school, I got really into watching like makeup YouTubers. It was in the era of like, well, it was years ago, like six years ago. So it was in the era of like Jaclyn Hill, Kathleen Lights. Those are some of the people that I would watch. I just watched literally hours and hours of YouTube, kind of taught myself. But also being a model has really, really helped me learn a lot about makeup because, you know, I sit in a makeup chair for like an hour before I do most of my shoots and I get industry professionals doing my makeup. So I've had a lot of time to just kind of like watch how other people do it on me, learn like tricks and techniques. When I was in high school, I would do all of my friends prom makeup. So actually funny story, my senior year, for prom, I did like every girl in my group's makeup. There were like eight girls in our group probably, including myself. So I had them all scheduled out the day of prom, like starting at like 10 a.m. of doing everybody's makeup. And then it took too long. I didn't have time to do my own makeup before we went to pictures. So we were driving to pictures and I like brought my makeup bag with me and I was doing my makeup in the car in the passenger seat of my friend's minivan doing my prom makeup. It actually turned out pretty well, if I do say so myself. It was pretty funny. If you all want to see a like more tutorial version of my makeup, you can comment down below that you wanna see that. I have always, always wanted to do a makeup tutorial, so I would do it for y'all. I have realized doing this that it's a lot harder than I thought to talk while doing my makeup, but I will make it work and I will practice for y'all if that's what you wanna see. All right, y'all, I am struggling trying to do my eyes and answer these questions. So I'll be right back and then I'll finish answering your questions. <laughs> All right, I'm back. My eyes are done. It was process, but here we are. Um, so I'll answer the last question while I'm doing my lips. What would you say to young women who are feeling self-conscious about their looks? What I would say to young women and what I would say to younger me is that you are not alone ever in the feelings that you feel about yourself. Everybody has those days where they're feeling less confident or they're feeling they're not satisfied with themselves. 
but, and that's okay. You can have those days. It's gonna happen and you're gonna get through them. The good days and the highs always come with the bad days and the lows. Once you get through those though, you will be a stronger person. And all of those feelings of self-doubt or self-consciousness will come with the highest of highs of feeling great about yourself. And you just have to know that you will get to a point where you feel great, you love yourself, and that should just always be the goal. I would say to my younger self to appreciate the body that you're in because it can do so, so many things. Just think about how powerful you are, all of the amazing things that your body can do and that your mind can do. And you are so much more of a complex person than just your body and just what you look like. You are way, way more than that. And that's what matters, is the kind of person that you are. And that will always shine through, no matter what you look like. Your personality will carry you through life. You will always be able to fall back on who you are as a person. All right, friends, those are all of the questions that I had from you all. Thank you so much for sending those in. Um, next week, our model Taryn will be answering your questions. So make sure you head on over to the Facebook and Instagram stories polls so that you can submit questions for her. We'll be posting every Thursday at 3 p.m. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and you can hit the bell icon to make sure you get a notification when we upload videos. Stay chic.